All right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And, you know, I keep saying this job just keeps getting better. When I got to work yesterday, who was here in the store but Cleo Palmeyer, um, one of the first gross of Napa Valley. You know, palmeyer has been around, I think 1986 was the first vintage of the proprietary red. And uh, these wines uh, just go from strength to strength. Everything they make at this winery is outstanding. I just have one complaint. Only six bottles of Chardonnay. That's our allocation of the Napa 2010 Please, somebody help me out here. We can drink that in our sleep. We've already sold it. I don't know why we have it up here, but 2010, some very good Chardonnays. That's what we started out from Paul Meyer, the Sonoma Coast. They make two, and the Napa, the Sonoma Coast. Uh, well, both of these are barrel fermented. They spent 11 months on the leaves. They're stirred weekly, a really rich style of Chardonnay, which we like. Most of the fruit comes from the Ritchie Vineyard, over 75%, but you will not see the vineyard names on the wines at Paul Meyer. They're really trying to promote their own brand. And Well, I think you have to use more of that, 85 or 95% to call it a single vineyard wine. Anyways, only about 1,500 cases of this wine produced. And that's why we can only get six bottles. But anyways, a very rich and fruity wine on the nose. Hints of cinnamon, vanilla spice from that uh, new oak, vanilla bean also, creme caramel. Really complex bouquet of aromas coming out of this Sonoma wine. A big, full-blown Chardonnay with layers of vanilla spice and that, and that uh, lovely freshness on the finish. Even though it's full-blown, still very well-balanced, uh, refreshing, lovely creamy texture in this Sonoma. The Napa, a little bigger to me. And uh, Napa wines tend to be a little fruitier. Only five acres of, plant, of Chardonnay was planted in 2012, so they're going to be doing some vineyard-designated wines in the future, uh, but nothing thus far. Most of the fruit from this comes from wa fruit from this comes from Waters Ranch and Atlas Peak, Antonori's Atlas Peak Vineyard. A high elevation, 2,100 feet, so a bit cooler. You get a little better acidity there. Chardonnay likes the cold weather, and uh, right next to their Cabernet up there, lovely tropical fruit in this one. A lovely ripeness on the tongue, and uh, lovely toasty oak spice here as well. I thought the Napa just had a little more concentration and complexity to it, but uh, depending on what we can get to higher allocation of, we might have to change the score of the Napa Sonoma. No, both of them really outstanding Chardonnays. Um, I just tended to like the Napa a little bit better. On this occasion, the Paul Meyer Pinot Noir, this is from the Wayfarer Vineyard, planted in 2000-2001, and uh, Helen Turley introduced Jason Paul Meyer to this vineyard, 1,100 foot elevation. And they get enough sun ripe here because it's so high to get the Pinot Noir ripe because uh, it can be very hard out there on the Sonoma Coast. It's really cold. And they have this gold ridge soil there, which is uh, unique to this vineyard. Uh, Aaron Green made these wines for, well, since Helen Turley left. And uh, Kale Anderson came on board in 2011. And, uh, well, they have two winemakers now. I guess Viviana Gonzalez is making the Son or is making the wines from Sonoma, and then uh, Kale is making the wines from Napa here now. This wine's got a lovely dark raspberry, wild strawberry fruit with a good hand of floral and spice notes, and a lovely raspberry and strawberry fruit on the palate there. A nice freshness and zest here to the finish. Even though it's got a lot of fruit, which is a signature of California wines, and Paul Meyer, a really big wine, uh, their Chardonnays and their Cabernets and their Merlots, the Pinot also, you know, a big wine. This is what they like here at Paul Meyer, but still really well balanced and an excellent bottle of wine. Uh, the 2009 Merlot. We've had this wine many times at Brown Bag, and I can tell you no one has ever guessed this Merlot. A Cabernet Drinker's Merlot made for the first time in 1995, and it was in Jason it was inspired by a barrel of Merlot that he found at Maryvale uh, while well, he's making his wine there, and he just fell in love with it, and he said, man, I have to make Merlot like this. 90% Merlot, 8 to 10% Cabernet in any vintage. The fruit comes from Waters Ranch, same as the Chardonnay. And uh, Beckstoffer Les Amigas in another vineyard in Wooden Valley. This wine has some lovely dark plum and dark cherry fruit, currant berry, dark cocoa, sweet herbs, really decadent bouquet, more Cabernet-like than uh, uh, Merlot-like for the most part. Some uh, dark earth and espresso notes here. Dark and rich on the tongue with smooth, silky tannins. One of the things Merlot is more on the front of your mouth than on the back of the palate. And uh, excellent nuance through the finish, that earth and cocoa and spice note showing lovely structure for a Merlot. Merlot. Excellent juice at $90. And then the 2009 Proprietary Red, as I mentioned before, the first vintage of this wine, 1986. And uh, we've had many older vintages of this wine in the store at Brown Bag. Always excellent. A wine that ages very well. This 2009 is a blend of 82% Cabernet Sauvignon, 8% Merlot Cabernet Franc, Petit Verdot and Malbec. It's always contained all five of the Bordeaux varietals. Uh, the Petit, Petit Verdot and Malbec come from their own vineyard. You don't find a lot of Malbec in Napa Valley. And uh, a lot of the Cabernet comes from Stagecoach, uh, one of our favorite vineyard sites in Napa Valley. Only 4,000 cases produced. Uh, well, it's not a 
ton, but it's also, you know, for $150 wine, it's a fair amount of wine. Randy Dunn was the first winemaker here. Helen took over in 1992, and then Aaron Jordan, and then the, the winemakers I just mentioned are there now. Lots of lovely, delicious currant and dark cherry fruit coming through on the nose and on the palate as well. And this wine's got lovely round tannins. These 2009s, very showy, really starting to come out of their shell here, really drinking nicely, but a firm hand of acidity holding things together here and, you know, a sign of things to come. This wine you could keep for 10 years in your cellar. Wonderful depth and balance on the finish. Most excellent juice, and it should be at $146 a bottle. That's what I had to drink with Cleo Palmeyer. I'm your host, Andrew Lampasoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.